Hello everyone. This has been one beautiful week of weather. I've been working in the backyard. I was on my boat and you know something pretty cool happened when I was standing on the dock. One of the boaters came up to me and this lady, her name is Maya. She is a clothing designer and quite the actual designer I must say, but she made me and my family something different. A mask. And what I like about this is it says, where is it? Make it right. Now, this is something really cool that uh, Maya has done for me and my family. And thinking of safety of being around the boat, you're supposed to have people uh, staying six feet at least away. And when we walk by the docks, we're supposed to wear masks and everything. I love the idea that somebody thought of my safety and such good people that I had to actually show that to you. Getting back to my deck. Now, what we've been doing on the deck, all sun, I've been able to do a lot of clear coat staining. Uh, we've had, now, I'm actually just gonna show you a video and then we'll yak a little more about it. Take a look at this video. We are working on the deck once again. This morning, we had actually set up a cleaner to clean the stone. Now, this is a limestone that I chose. I really like it, but my first instincts told me lime. Hmm porous will it grab will it cause problems i asked some questions and unfortunately what happened is is efflorescent salt that's naturally in the stone came up to the surface when it rained not to mention we did a polymer mix in between the tiles and that also stained the tile guess what we used to clean it a mix of 50 50 vinegar and water not just chemicals that are used on the market it worked very well. Next stage, what we're going to do is actually enhance the tile. That's going to seal it. It's going to give it a darker feel and really complement everything we're doing. Right now, we've done all the cedar back wall. That's where the TV is going to be. And you can see that we're putting up a clear coat over the cedar. And the clear coat enhances, much like the enhancer for the stone, it enhances that natural color of the cedar and it helps seal it from Mother Nature. I'll have to do it about every two years, but it's not a bad thing. So last week when I was talking to you guys live, I challenged this company to come in and set up all the furniture for me. I met with them this morning and uh, they're going to do that and they're gonna surprise me. I don't wanna know, but I'm really curious about it. At the same time, somebody else was watching the broadcast and said, we have cabinets and countertops you can use. So I said, well, why don't you come in and see me? And I'm glad I did. I want you to take a quick look at this here. This is kind of brilliant. This is an exterior product. It's man-made. And what do you think it's made with? This is foam, teak, ground down, and polymers, making a wonderful finish that will last for years outside. So all the cabinets can be made in this. And I never even would have thought of, look, I mean, look at that. A steel trim, that can be the doors, that can be the end gables. One thing I didn't think of, was the countertop could be a porcelain tile. So when I said porcelain tile, I don't normally tile the countertop in place. You'd have to do wood, tile one at a time. No, 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 no. They got full countertop quartz. They can make this three quarters of an inch thick, an inch and a quarter thick, or as thick as what you're seeing right now. What I love about this one here is that it's a matte finish, it's not a gloss finish easily kept clean the color matching i can see the grain here that goes down matches the floor at the same time with these cabinets i'm thinking i can have 16 inch deep cabinets on this side wrap it with a countertop put dishes garbage everything in these cabinets and when i say garbage a garbage can on this side over here i want to do a double cabinet with a countertop drop down to 36 inches for two fridges that'll go inside. One will be for wine, one will be for beer and water. Okay, so that works with that. When you look at the columns, here's what we did. This is a black aluminum wrap. It comes in four different pieces. They all interlock, snap in place. A couple of screws in the top, a couple of screws in the bottom. I'll give it a little bit of lipstick and mascara later on when we're done. That'll be black caulking to go all the way around. Keep the bees from trying to make a nest and give it that wonderful finish. This so far is really starting to excite me. We are getting to the point of about two to three weeks finish from here and that big party I promised you. Just wait, you're gonna love this. 
Okay, you know, that's funny because as I'm watching the video, just like you did, you heard me say the porcelain tile, and then I said quartz counter. I'm so used to saying quartz, but the counter is actually porcelain in big pieces. That really opened up my mind to, I didn't know we could do full piece quartz countertops. I said it again, porcelain. So I'm looking into the porcelain countertops because it's, it's something different. It's 100% non-porous. I'm gonna look at the choices I have and I will be getting back with Anne Marie on that. And you'll be seeing our choice of what we pick coming up real soon. Now, Michelle Mills, she says, hi Mike, how are you and your family doing? Watching from Northeast Ohio. Hello in Ohio, I'm sure it's hot there because I know it's hot here. There's a 10 year old girl that uh, sent in a question. I think this is really cute. So I wanted to, I wanted to read this. I want to look at this. Dear Mr. Holmes, my name is Gianna and I'm 10 years old. I love all your shows and watch them with my dad. My dream is to flip a house with my dad. What advice do you have for when my dad and I flip a house? I hope you and your family are doing well and staying safe. Please respond as you, if you have time. Well, Gianna, uh, you are 10 years old. I think this is rather cute. Uh, you're going to have to wait till maybe you are 16 and then work with your dad. The advice I can give you is find an area outside of the city that is up and coming. The house is not in terrible shape, but in fairly good shape and in need of some love. And hopefully you and dad, your dad can work together, renovate it, turn it into a wonderful little dream for a buyer out there that would love what you can put together. Thanks for asking me that question. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a few things. One of my favorite, or one of your favorite projects from Homes and Homes, we're gonna be talking to Crystal, my designer on one of the Gannon Ugly jobs. You remember the marina we did. We're also gonna be talking to Chad. I did not know this, but June is your garage door safety month. We've got a lot of tips. How to avoid accidents. We had a great conversation about this the other day. And something you need to pay attention to. And you are awesome too. Now, right now, let's get to see Crystal. How are you, Crystal? Hi, I am good. How are you? I'm really well. It's too bad I've only been back to Gananoque once since I've completed that job. Uh, but I've been really, really busy. Uh, have you been busy? We have been. We've been really busy here, too. We're spending a lot of time, though. Um, lots more time with the kids and doing some family stuff. It's been nice for a little bit of a slowdown, but same as you, things are picking up uh, substantially, and um, it's going well. Well, let's hope that it continues in that direction. I've got my own fears about what's going to happen in the mm -hmm. upcoming month uh, renovations. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope we get over this real soon as long as we're all safe and practicing what we're supposed to we just may get there right. now i want to take a, a let's a, a walk back look at uh the wonderful job we did in Gavin and i when i was there man it looks so beautiful you see the before mm -hmm. see the after and right now with everybody being home the whole thought about is working on your property in the kitchen your bathroom especially outdoors i don't know if you know this but all the stores are out of barbecues uh, all the depots, all the depots are almost out of cedar, pressure treated because all of a sudden everyone is trying to work in their backyard. Yeah. You have some tips on how to spice up your backyard. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, I, I think it's really important first off, if, if you're making a plan uh, to do your backyard is to actually start figuring out what it is that's really important to you. So what are you going to use the most? Um, and, and actually making a plan. You can meet with a designer and actually put something on paper. If you have a harder time visualizing things, uh, I find that a little bit helpful. And it's also helpful for a budget, depending on what you want to invest into your backyard. Um, some big things, of course, you would always want to make sure is that you have some sort of shaded area, um, whether that's you know, an umbrella, a pergola, uh, trees, shrubs, things like that. Make sure you have a section where people can sit and relax in the shade, you know, if it's an outdoor space. Um, you know, a place too where people can sit and gather, if that's dining. I know, I think you had put uh, an area for a bar and kind of an outdoor kitchen. I mean, um, that obviously would be wonderful and ideal, but you gotta kind of figure out what's gonna work best for you. Uh, if you put that on a plan somewhere, then a lot of the time I tell people, if you're able to 
put it down uh, on a plan, then you can kind of do it over, let's say a two, five year sort of, of term. Right? You don't have to do everything all at once. And that way it's not so overwhelming. Um, a lot of the time too, if you're looking to uh, invest in furniture, I always tell people, I love color. I love great pops of color. Um, if you're on your bigger pieces, I tend to go a little bit more neutral on my bigger pieces and then really start uh, adding a lot of color with cushions and your umbrellas and things where you can actually change over time, right? So your, your major pieces can be timeless and then everybody gets, you know, your fads go in and out and uh, it's easy or easier to replace smaller things to, to give an extra burst of color. Yeah. That hardscape, right? Yeah. So the, the hardscape is the main colors you're going to use. The softscape is the things you can change, which is orange on your pillows, green on your pillows, uh, yeah. plant for that matter. And I think that's a really nifty thing. You know me. I'm about zones. I love zones. I love love zones, uh, cool zones, hot zones, music yeah. zones, bar zones, kitchen. Speaking of kitchen, the outdoor kitchen I'm doing, just wait till I show it. I'm not going to show the marinating. I give them little stink peeks. Yeah. But this, the idea is inside your home, in the kitchen, all the family comes into play. Uh, that's the heart of the home is the kitchen. And I chose to do that outside because when my family comes over, we get to hang around the kitchen slash bar area. And that's, you can eat on that spot. I've set up the big dining room table in the cabana in case it rains that we can go inside the cabana. And I do have that company coming in to surprise me Yay. on more patio furniture. You know, like you, I wasn't used to having a designer. Okay, right. and it was such a great experience working with you that it opened up my eyes and I brought Kim in later on and now I'm saying, what? Well, why should I actually design the outdoor patio furniture look when I can bring in a professional and do just that? I love the backyard, what we did with again, not with simple, it's got the fire table, the barbecue, the chairs, the umbrella, and that was just an area when all the boaters come in, they had a, a spot to sit, so it's yeah. not done it's not underdone but it, it it looks really good yeah oh thank you i'm glad you like it i love it too so when i'm finished did you want to come over for a barbecue providing that we can you know i may have to wear a mask you have to wear a mask yes but would you like to come over of course it would be amazing we'd love to see everything that you've done it'd be amazing well i'm actually looking, i'm looking forward to that so, Crystal, oh. I have to say to you, keep doing what you're doing. Oh, thank you. And you too. And we'll definitely see you soon. Thank you so much. Keep smiling. And I can't wait to come back out there and visit again. But you got to come back down here. We just know. have to reciprocate. <laughs> we will. Okay. We'll be there. Okay. Good thanks, day. Mike. Bye for now. Now, June, Garage Door Safety Month, was a, kind of a surprise for me because... You know, I like the idea that you need to work on your furnace. You should do it in the summer or in a spring or fall time because that way they're not so busy, especially when it comes to air conditioning and or heat. You want to pick a time where the guys aren't busy. But I didn't think of the garage door. And I actually had a couple of problems in my own garage. So when Chad came over, you got to take a look at this. Chad, are you here right now? I think Chad is ready. Hi, Chad. Hey, how you so doing? I didn't really know about garage door safety, but this was a really good exercise for me to do with you that you came in. Now, Chad does all my garage doors for the show. He's uh, probably one of the best I've ever seen. He's got an awful lot of talent. He's already fixed a few things in my house. <laughs> you know, a few more things to actually fix. Yeah. Let's watch the video first, okay, Chad? Absolutely. And we'll take a look at what happened. We shut the power off on the garage door. You always want to do that before you do any service in case someone doesn't know what you're doing and they press the remote and close the door in your head while you're working on it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to lubricate the tracks and we're going to do it in where the rollers run on the back and the front, mostly through the radius. Uh, most homeowners will end up spraying the rollers thinking that the noise is coming from the rollers. If you have a white nylon roller such as this, most likely you're not getting any noise from that roller. The noise comes when it goes through the track and when the panels turn. So we're just going to adjust the nozzle to the right to medium. And we're going to do a little spray. 
on the inside of where the roller is gonna travel. And we're not gonna coat it. You don't need to go overboard with the lube. Just give it a little bit of a coating. And then take your cloth and you're gonna wipe it down so that it doesn't clump. So more than lubing, you're actually cleaning the track. You're getting any debris that may have gathered in there, any dust, any sort of particles, you're gonna get them out of the track. And just nicely, this is something that homeowners can do, no problem. Again, make sure your door is disconnected so no one closes on you. And once that's done, you're gonna press the button and make sure everything runs nice and smooth. Quiet. Okay, so that's just a little trick. And the other things that uh, we talked about was the pressure of the door. And I didn't realize you could go to a big box store and buy a garage door opener that is heavy powered and increase that power for that door to close. It was a couple accidents we talked about where young baby died and that really bothered me. So one, safety, never have a child in front, especially a baby. At the bottom or underneath that garage door, what happened was there was a baby there. The guy pulled the string and the door came down like a me and killed the child, didn't it? That, that's right. That was, uh, yeah, that was, that was a while ago. And since that, that incident, um, brands such as LiftMaster have changed their whole product line so you cannot manually adjust the force anymore which is a really smart thing. When you install the door properly, a professional does it, the force will be learned inherently within the operator and they've taken that out of the equation. I think it was because of that, uh, that incident itself that it happened, so. And other things, you know, I had a friend that tried to adjust the spring and you put that pipe in, you push up, you put another pipe in, you push up. And what happened was she slipped one of the pipes out and it came down and broke her jaw, smash all the teeth out. Yeah. Never touch anything you don't know about. You've hear, heard me say this many times. When it comes to safety, uh, Carol's asking, what kind of lube did you spray on that door? Was that a silicone lube? Yeah, it's a specific lube generated for the garage door industry. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes we see is people use products such as WD-40 or, or we even worse, they use grease and they coat the tracks with grease up and down collects debris, collects dust, it gets cold, it gets thick. The door actually operates worse when you do that. So the main point there is you want to clean those tracks with a proper lubricant that won't leave residue and won't collect uh, debris, such as like any any good garage door company will sell that lube to you. It's not overly expensive. It's, uh, you know, maybe $15 a can, something like that. And it'll last you probably five or six years if you just use it in the garage door. See, little things, right? No grease. Right. Like, it sense. You want to hold the dirt, it's going to trap it in my daughter told me that. You bet. So, Has Amanda called you already? Pardon me? Has my oldest daughter, Amanda, phoned you yet? She hasn't. I haven't heard from her. Okay. So she's going to be calling you. I'm giving you a heads up. Okay. She texted me the other day and she said, Dad, do you know a garage door guy? <laughs> she she has a problem with a garage door and she says her door is molding and falling apart. So this is something that we're going to see on older type garage doors, probably wood, if I'm correct. Yes? Yeah, most likely. And the problem with wood doors is they saturate, right? They get rain in them, and they end up holding it inside of the panels. And then it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And then the spring won't balance it. Springs break, cables break, and the, and the door becomes dangerous at that point because it can also separate. It's only, separate, it's only held up at the very ends of the door when it's in the open position. So if your wood is becoming rotted and starts to do this little smiley face that you see on the bottom, that's a problem. That's that's a potential serious hazard and danger. And doors do fall every single day. And I, I, that's something I don't think we look at. It's, it's much like people don't look at the shingles on the roof until right. it actually leaks inside the house from a big storm. These are the little things that we actually just need to think about before. June was chosen for garage door safety well, probably because it's just after spring. It's time to take a look at your garage door and make sure it's safe for you and your family. I think that's a great idea. I really do. Yeah. Are you busy right now? Yeah, I mean it's um like obviously we want to promote garage door safety throughout the year, of course. But I mean, you know, through the International Door Association and the Canadian Door Institute, we've sort of nominated June as the 
as dealers that are accredited, we try and send out e-blasts to our customers and clients and home builders to say uh, it's time to do a, a yearly tune-up just to, to re, you know, to, to remind people that there's like over 20,000 uh, hospital visits per year in North America just due to garage door accidents. That almost sounds more than like ladder accident. Yeah. That's a large number. Well, it's, it's, a, it's the largest and most heaviest moving object on most people's house, right? And they don't understand that the dangers associated with it are uh, are numerous. And I mean, it, it's it's most people go in and out of their garage doors more than they go in and out of their front door. So they're using it uh, 10, 20 times a day. And, uh, you know, it's a four or 500 pound object that's sitting over top of your head and it moves. So you've got to have it. In. That's a really good point. Little things, would you let people, uh, I mean, besides using that spray silicone on the edges, would you let them do anything else? Would you say you really should bring in someone if you think there's a problem, right? Correct, yeah. Generally, you know, you can hear things. If, if, if there's grinding and if there's struggling going on with your door, um, that's a sign that you should probably call a professional and have them look at it. Um, a lot of things we can do now is over the phone. You can FaceTime us and we can sort of say, okay, we can see the problem. Um, you know, don't touch it. Or a lot of times we will be honest and we'll tell people, okay, you can just do this very quick little thing to at least secure your door in the down position until we can get there. So it doesn't require an emergency trip. Like if it's on a weekend or something, right? Now I know you're coming out to my place tomorrow. Correct? Right. We're going to be doing a couple things in here. Uh, we just had the spray cork one. Which, you know me, I love that spray cork. I did the outside of the garage. Did the bottom skirt of the deck, and we'll be showing you soon. Uh, so that's all done, and we're going to be able to put that new rim on the bottom. And the reason I call Chad for the one out there is because I had a cushion on the bottom of the door, and I've got a really big shop door, not just a garage door. Talk about heavy, it's a heavy door. And I guess over opening and closing, bringing my tractors out, and all the toys that I have, it has worn over the time, and I actually tried to fix it myself. Which I looked at, went, why am I doing this? Called Chad, and he's going to be coming in to do that. Also, he's going to be changing some, I don't want to say defective garage door openers, but when we built my garage, there was a time period of door openers that caused the problem. They had a little brain inside, correct? And it yeah. confused the garage door openers with acting up, so we're going to be changing those. That's right, yeah. That's, you know, a lot of manufacturers have switched to putting the brains on the wall rather than in in the up top where the operator is and it just makes it easier for service guys and, and that stuff but well here's one here's one from chris where cut it off having trouble with my opener not working unless i am real close to the garage door even with a new battery now this would be a push button remote why is that so this is one of my favorite questions and and something that i'm uh i'm really happy with the solution i've i've, I've figured out lately um as, as uh, technology evolves, more and more things are becoming wireless and smart and uh, technology is, is, is just increasing. So the airwaves are actually getting very dirty. Um, so the, the, the frequency that your garage door runs on is probably somewhere around the 350 megahertz range. So I actually have a tool that's a spe spectrum analyzer and I can come to your house and use this tool to actually read the frequency that your remote is, and then read where um, where the interference could be coming from. And we troubleshoot it one thing at a time. I've, I've troubleshooted this, it's, it's really cool. A couple of things I found is uh, at one house, there was a wireless doorbell that was just stuck enough and it was causing interference. And his wireless doorbell would open the garage door in the middle of the night on this customer's house. Um, but with my analyzer, I was able to- It was too close to the same frequency, right? That's right. So okay. Like, LED so light. I like that. that means little things that a, a garage door guy can do. Pick June, pick, pick, July, pick May for that matter. Bring in a garage door guy, take a look at your door. Give me an idea of a question of what it costs for you to come in and take a visit. Just a visit. Uh, I'm going to say it's one of your least expensive uh, repairs or maintenance things you can do. Like for us to come in and do a quick check on your garage door, lubricate, adjust, do the tension, check the motor, check the safeties. Certify your door basically approved by us. You're probably around $140. Okay, that's very inexpensive. I didn't expect it to be that low. So thank you. I think that's wonderful. Chad, please keep doing what you're doing, and I'll see you tomorrow.
appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Well, okay, so uh, the things that we've learned doing these, I want to keep this up because I really like bringing in the pros and having a conversation with them. And having Chad here when we talked about that accident about a baby, uh, that's real, by the way, folks. It's, it was like just someone didn't think about it. You know that handle you pull that releases the door. The baby was in a carriage right underneath the door, and it came down and unfortunately killed that baby. And that's just an accident that can be avoided. It's just don't have the kids under the door. Get your garage door checked. Ask the right questions. Get the right answers. You know, I'm a really good contractor, and, and you hire me to do make your dreams come true. But I don't do garage doors. There's things that I don't do. But I do talk to the pros out there, and that's the good part about what I do and the good part about you watching. Now, we're going to continue working on the deck. I can't wait to show you what we're doing next. And please, keep watching. Keep coming back with questions, and I'll keep giving you answers. Have a great day.